I want my statement for people to know what really happened in this country. So they plan to host Olympics in Moscow. The Olympic community don't care about human rights. They don't allow visitors to come with good cameras because they are scared of images. If I can figure out how to film, would you be willing to share your story publicly? My idea is for you to read your statement as if you're speaking to the audience. Okay. Japan does not accept refugees. They just give you the forms to feel what is their life. Maybe you want to I mean, still know it has two years in here that a lot of people took four or five years. What are you home, Daijin? え、there's so much more that I want to talk to you about. I'm just, I'm, I'm afraid that maybe they listen to these phone calls. Yes, yes, sometimes they, they, they listen. And I thought that situation is the first massive hunger strike. So to the men, Corona TV game has very hard to this go. Corona TV has very hard to this go. But I think that this year, I'm going to be able to do this this year. The Olympics postponed. For me, it's kind of having a seeing justice kind of punishment for for Japan. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Uh, sorry. Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I'm just waking up. Uh, welcome to our press conference today. Um, well, the clip you saw was an extract from uh, a movie shot by uh, the person sitting beside me here, Thomas Ash. I'll introduce him properly in a second. Um, what uh, I also want to do is introduce uh, the people who are beside him. Uh, that's Mr. Denny's uh, and Mr. Lewis Christian. Uh, they are both former detainees of the Ushiku Center, which is, of course, uh, the movie that we are discussing today. Uh, the Ushiku Center is Japan's largest detainee center, uh, and uh, the two people at the table uh, have both spent time in there, and they are on provisional release. Well, as we probably, uh, many of you know, Japan's diet has scrapped controversial reforms uh, to the uh, immigration law, that, if passed, would have allowed authorities to forcibly deport people who failed to qualify for asylum after two attempts. The fact that that law was scrapped uh, is significant and may have something to do with the recent death of a Sri Lankan woman uh, who was in the care of detention authorities in Nagoya uh, and uh, who passed away after what appears to have been a very trying and difficult period. Uh, Ushku in Ibaraki Prefecture, as I said, is home to Japan's largest immigration detention center. Uh, Thomas Ash has made a documentary that takes viewers deep into the psychological and physical environment of foreigners who are held there. He secretly recorded interviews of detainees, giving people a voice who rarely are heard in the media or anywhere else. Many of these people are refugees seeking asylum. 
Uh, and as I'm sure we will discuss today, a spate of deaths in detention centers over the years has been blamed on conditions inside those centers and on lengthy detainee, detentions, I should say, uh, uh, sometimes up to a year or more of people who are uh, outstanding their visas or have other problems. Um, so, uh, Ian, uh, sorry, Thomas, of course, is well known to many of you. He has been here before. He is a uh, well known documentary maker. He's based in Tokyo. I believe he's been here for nearly two decades. Uh, he is going to talk first uh, for uh, about 10 minutes, and then we're going to hear from the other two speakers. Yurosh Konegaishimas. Can I just remind you, if you haven't, to uh, turn off your uh, Keitai phones in case they go when we're talking? Thank you. begin by thanking you all uh, for being in attendance today, and I would especially like to thank the participants in the film that have joined me here, uh, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis, for their courageousness in sharing their stories. Uh, the FCCJ is, is streaming this on the YouTube channel uh, in English. We have simultaneous Japanese translations. For those of you that would like to watch this from home in Japanese, um, on our uh, Twitter feed, uh, at Ushiku Film, we are live streaming the, the Japanese uh, simultaneous translation. So please go to our, our Twitter page. Sorry. Yes, and on the FCC, FCC channel, it's only in English. That's correct. Um, I would first like to begin by explaining uh, how I came about to make this film. Uh, I began visiting the immigration facility in Ushku as a volunteer, and I was deeply affected by hearing the stories of some of the people that were detained. It was only then that I began to think about how to use the power of film to bring this story to the attention of the Japanese public and to the world. Since filming and photography is prohibited inside of the center, I began to think about how to accomplish this technically, as well as how to confirm the needed consent. When I first met the people in detention, I asked each of them, as it is seen in the trailer, for their permission to share their stories. Nine of them consented to having their stories shared. They are the participants in this film. However, and I will state clearly, when I filmed them, they did not know at the time that they were being filmed. I hid the camera and intentionally did not share with them at the time how or when I was filming. I did this for the following reasons. There was no way to tell if our meetings were being listened to or secretly observed. There was no way to tell whether the immigration officials were watching our meetings through the one-sided mirror in the meeting room door. And I did not want to be stopped from gathering evidence about what was happening in the detention center. I bear the full and sole responsibility for the filming of these people inside of the meeting rooms of the detention facility. Under no circumstances should the participants in the film be held accountable or punished for what I have done. My motivation was not to make a film, but rather as a witness to human rights violations, I felt morally compelled to document evidence in the form of filming the detainees' testimonies, to document their truth. There were three detainees who at the time I believed were facing a grave threat to their lives. With the recent death of Wishma Sandamal Ratnayake, who had been de detained for seven months at the immigration center in Nagoya, and the deaths of 16 others over the past 20 years, demonstrates why so many supporters are concerned about the health and well being of people suffering in indefinite detention. During the course of the pandemic, eight of the nine participants of the film were granted provisional release and, ex and released from the detention facility. I was able to meet them outside, explain to them what I had filmed, and confirm whether they consented to sharing their stories through the documentary. The eight participants reviewed the footage that had been recorded inside, and all of them consented to having their footage released. 
Several of the participants were also interviewed while they were out on provisional release. One of the participants who to date has not been released from detention participates in the film solely through phone calls. This participant has given his verbal consent to the use of his name and his voice in the film. I would now like to focus the attention on the courageousness of the people who are speaking out against the immigration system and sharing their truth. They are taking a massive risk in speaking out. While my hope is that sharing their voices can be part of bringing change to the system and prevent other people from facing similar abuses, there is a serious risk of retaliation by the immigration authorities. The climate of fear that the immigration authorities has created is so severe that it even causes some supporters who passionately fight for change to be so afraid of retaliation that they engage in self-censorship. This may take the form of a reluctance to speak out against the status quo and even in actively discouraging victims of the immigration authorities from speaking their truth. It is what Frederick Schauer once described as the chilling effect. And it is this effect the Immigration Services Agency and its parent structure, the Ministry of Justice's policies have imposed on free expression. An example of this chilling effect has recently manifested itself in relation to this documentary. After releasing the trailer last week, it came to my attention that the supporter of one of the participants in the documentary is claiming that he had not been given the opportunity to give his consent to participate in it. The supporter in question alleges that the participant had requested an opportunity for his lawyer to review the footage before giving his consent, and that without being allowed to do so, the trailer was suddenly released. I will reiterate that all nine participants who are in the documentary have given their consent on multiple occasions. Eight of them, including the participant in question, were given the opportunity to review their footage and did so. The participants were asked multiple times for their permission and were informed as recently as the day before the trailer was released that it was going to be released. The participants have been informed of the events and developments regarding the film, such as this press conference and the upcoming preview and world premiere, which I will speak about in a moment. I would like it to be known that two of the nine participants did request for their lawyer to review the footage to which I, of course, obliged. If any other participant would have requested to have their footage reviewed by their lawyer, I would have prepared the footage for that to happen. On the two occasions that participants requested for their lawyer to review the footage, all I asked was that the participants in question call their lawyer to inform them that I would be calling and the reason. No lawyer would speak to me without their client's consent. When victims of human rights abuses wish to speak out, our role is, as supporters is to support them, not to discourage or suppress their right to speak their truth. I have received multiple threatening emails, texts, phone calls, and a voice message from this supporter. If this is the level of threat that the supporter is leveling against me as the person who recorded these testimonies, I am afraid to imagine the amount of fear he has inflicted into the participant in question in an effort to discourage him from speaking out. The amount of time and effort being spent on actively attempting to discourage these victims from speaking out only confirms how successful the authorities have been at creating this climate of fear in Japan. To anyone actively working to stop these victims from raising their voices, stop using your energy and time to preserve the status quo. Any supporter trying to silence the victims who wish to speak out is simply doing the work of the immigration authorities. 
This is all I will say about this topic because it is regret regrettably taking time away from the issue of human rights violations being faced by the participants. Let us all direct our time and effort toward the participants who are suffering under the current immigration regime. While the fact that this film comprises hidden camera footage may seem shocking, the footage I took simply documents the real-time conversations with detainees as they speak about their mistreatment by immigration officials and endure indefinite long-term detention. I did not film anything beyond the meeting room at the immigration center. Yes, I broke the rule regarding the prohibition of filming and recording in the meeting rooms, but I think we must first ask ourselves, why does this rule exist? The detention center is not a prison, and the detainees have not committed any crimes. If they want to speak and have their stories shared, why are they not allowed to do so? If there had been a way to document what was happening inside of the detention center without breaking the rules, I would have done so. But there was no other way. The most horrifying footage that audience will, audiences will witness in this film is not that which was filmed by me, but in fact, that which was filmed by the immigration authorities themselves. Lawsuits being brought against immigration have resulted in these deeply disturbing images being obtained by a lawyer who then shared them with me. These images audience will see are infinitely more frightful than the footage I recorded of people giving their oral testimony. Before I hand the floor over to Mr. Dennis and Mr. Lewis Christian, I would like to remind our Japanese listeners that on our Twitter account, Ushiku Film, you can hear the Japanese translation of what we are uh, talking about today. I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis, who have so bravely and courageously come here today to share with them their truth. Once they have spoken, I will briefly share about the upcoming screenings of the documentary. Thank you. Thank you. So just to uh, remind everybody, the interpreters today are Mary Joyce and Shane Harris. They're over in the interpreting booth there, and they're uh, interpreting uh, simultaneously. Um, I think Dennis, Mr. Dennis is going to go first. Is that right? And Mr. Dennis is going to speak in Japanese. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming here and listening today. I am thankful. I am a Kurdish Turk. My name is Dennis. I came to Japan in 2007. I was married in 2011. And then for about three and a half years, I was held by the immigration where I suffered from psychological abuse, bullying on many, many times. Thomas came to meet with me there. I think I shared this before also. But Thomas, when he came to interview us, I, I saw the film afterwards. But none of us inside the detention facility, none of us said that this is a great place. We wouldn't say that. It was the worst place. Just so much bullying can't go to hospital, no good food, etc, etc, etc. So there is not a single good thing I can say about the immigration. If it was a good place, we wouldn't leave there, we would just be able to stay in there. We are married, some of us, some of us have children here. We are humans. We have fled from our own countries. We have come here so that we wouldn't be killed in our own countries, but we have suffered from the psychological abuse, being given medicine which makes us, you know, go crazy, tranquilizers, really wanting to die even. This is really how bad the immigration is facility. 
I, well, my film, I'm sure most of you have all seen this before. You've seen the abuse against me on the video by the immigration. That's not the first time. I've always, always, you know, seen them do this to other people as well. Our giving us, you know, if we have pain or and move just a little bit because of our pain, they say, oh, you're resisting, you're resisting. This is a lie. In this film which Thomas made, our what's in our hearts is really being conveyed. One other thing I would like to say, say a different thing, sorry everyone. There's many different volunteers, but just one or two are being negative about this film. That's something which for me, that criticism, in my words, that's getting in the way. Really, please, if you want to help us, don't get in the way of this film. Don't criticize this film. Volunteers, of course, when you are volunteering, well, you keep doing your volunteering, keep supporting, but don't say any of these bad things. Please, you can talk directly. Don't go onto Twitter, don't go onto Facebook. I've seen things that people are writing today. But I've seen people writing things that are not good there. But for us, now, this time, we need to come together. Unless we need to come together. If we are separate, it won't help us. The media, thanks to the media here today, our voice, the answer is being heard by everybody. They're seeing the film of me. It's thanks to these media who are the people working in the media, thanks to them, the newspapers, the journalists, thanks to them. Thanks to Thomas, thanks to Ishiba Taiga, Ishiba Taiga, everybody is listening to us now. Don't get in the way of this. I don't want you to do that. If you are a volunteer, just keep doing that. Don't get in the way. Don't say things about you know, the director. This criticism is getting in the way. Please don't do that. This is a really wonderful film. I'm sorry, but for those people who are appearing in the film, I really want to give you an applause today. Thank you. It's really a great film. I, I want everybody to see it. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mr. Louis? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming here today, and thank you also to give me the opportunity to share the, my sus, sus, uh, story, immigration story. I came to Japan in 2002 from Africa, and just after one week, I have applied for a uh, refugee at the Immigration Bureau. But uh, from 2002 to 2000. Uh, 2021. I'm already uh, 18 years in Japan, but I have spent seven years in, in detention, four times be detained at the Immigration Bureau. And in 2009, I have married a Japanese woman, and uh, the Immigration Bureau tried to, to break my marriage by saying to my wife that my marriage is a fake marriage, that after I have a visa, I will go to divorce her. So then uh, I was detained there for one and a half years. During that period, my wife like ran away because of what immigration have told uh, told her. So when, you, like I said, I have seven years. I've been seven years inside immigration, and what is very curious is that what happened inside immigration, there is nothing right in the in the media. The journalist has gone there, the lawyer has gone there, the volunteer has gone there. But the reality of what is happening inside immigration is all hide from people. Like me, people that married Japanese woman, there are many people there. I know that speaking about immigration is a big risk. Many people are afraid to speak of the topic of concern immigration. 
but I, I have to take that risk to speak out because I feel the pain for what they have done to me. So I have been living in the fear for a long time. The immigration as government, G7 country, they are openly break marriage, tell women to remove pregnancy. This I'm take, you can take the you can take the video, please. It's what they are doing there. Any Japanese woman that going to visit a foreigner, don't come here, don't come here, give out, give, give that guy away. You you going to you are too, you are too young. It's not going to make you happy. Go and look for another another husband. It's what you, it's what they are doing. So those kind of people that break marriage. Asking women to remove pregnancy, are they qualified to uh, go and ex investigate or examine uh, uh, any refugee status? They are not going to give any refugee status if they can break a legal marriage, if they can ask women to remove pregnancy. They are not qualified to, 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 to handle the matter of immigration. So, I, and this is since I, 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 my first detention was in 2004, this has been going on. You speak to the lawyer, it's like, you are not saying anything. They are seeing their, their, their client losing their family. They don't take any action. The media is going there. You speak to them, it's like you, you are not saying anything. The embassy is going there. All, everybody is aware of what they are doing, but nobody is, is speaking out. Nobody is speaking out. I come to Japan. I lose most of my family in, in Africa. I come here as a refugee. I ask them, please support me. Instead of supporting me, the government is asking my woman to go and remove pregnancy. Four months, four months pregnant woman. You ask her to remove pregnancy that the husband is a fake marriage. I'm not lying. That is the truth. It's what they are, they are doing. They destroy the, your reason to be in Japan as if you are married. They tell your wife to run away, seize your property. Then they can keep you in long term inside immigration because they will promise to the Japanese woman that we are not going to release him. You can divorce him, or take the property, run away. So when they promise to the woman that they are not going to release you, you're going to be there for long term. They do everything, everything possible to keep you there or kick you out of the country. So if you speak only about the refugee, there are refugees there, there are people that are married there, there are different kind of people there. And many people are afraid. Like I saw somebody, somebody die in my blog, uh, uh, Deepak Kumar, the Indian guy commits suicide in my blog, uh, in, in my blog. But, and the Cameroonian guy that, that died in 2014. People don't want to testify, people are afraid. Even when the lawyer come to tell people come and testify, people are afraid to speak about immigration. People are dying, they don't take people to hospital. My, me, myself, I was there, I have omitted blood for, 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 for more than one year and a half. I think you saw the picture. I'm not able to eat, I'll be vomiting blood when I vomit, they don't take me to hospital. No. They are doing this because they know that the system, the judge, every, I support them. If you go to court, you, go, you are not going to win. The immigration are saying, the officer are saying, even if you go to court, you are not going to win. The immigration officers, they, they are saying it. Even if you go to court, you, you cannot, it's the country. So they, they have built a system, a system to break marriage, take stealing kids away from foreigners, and there is nothing we can do. I come as a refugee, I ask them, I just come seven years, seven years, uh, after seven days, I apply for refugee status. I, Oh, the evidence I have, I give them. Instead of protecting me, they are taking my family away. And they don't want me to speak out. When I speak out, they detain me, they release me after three years, they just keep me one month outside without any reason, they, they take me back inside, just because I write a statement, then I send my statement to UN. And during my refugee, refugee interview, the inspector take my statement and say, why, why, why do you write this? This is against you. Did you know that? It's against you. For me to tell the truth that Japanese government killed my child, telling my wife that my marriage is a fake marriage after I will have permanence, I will divorce her. It's not normal for the government to do that. Even a terrorist, they are not doing that. I, I didn't hear any terrorists doing that one, attacking baby in the stomach of the mother because of the nationality or the race of the father. All embassy know what I'm saying. Nobody will come and tell me that I'm lying. This is affecting all community. 
So after killing my child, taking my wife away, uh, and cause damage to my family back home, you don't want me to speak out. Why should not speak out? Thank you. Just let me interrupt because we're going to uh, take questions and we want to leave time for questions. Is that okay? Sorry, uh, Lewis. Maybe um, uh, Ian, Thomas. You're going to sum up, are you? Um, thank you both. Thank you for, for sharing your testimonies. Um, I would like to share with you briefly about what's going to happen with the film next. The documentary is going to hold its world premiere in the 2021 Nippon Connection Japanese Film Festival in Frankfurt, Germany in June. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, this is the second year that the film festival will be held entirely online. While this may be disappointing for festival goers, it presents us with a unique opportunity to reach audiences across the world, including Japan. It is imperative that this documentary is seen by the Japanese audience. If it is not, there will be little chance for change. As it is a film festival, audiences will need to pay a fee to watch the films in the Nippon Connection program. In an effort to make the film as accessible as possible to as many people as possible, I have asked Nippon Connection to screen Ushiku in a free preview screening several days before the festival. The festival has graciously agreed. I would like to announce that one week from today, on May 27th, at 2100 in Japan, 1400 Central European summertime, and at 8 a.m. on the East Coast in the U.S., there will be a free online worldwide screening of Ushiku, followed by a Q&A. Thereafter, the documentary will participate in the Nippon Docs program of the Nippon Connection Japanese Film Festival from June 1st to June 6th. Information regarding the preview screening and the world premiere will be published on our documentary's website, ushikufilm.com, and communicated through our Twitter account, at ushikufilm. I'm going to be available for interviews after the press conference, so if you would like to ask questions during the Q&A, I would ask that they are focused and directed to Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis, who have so bravely joined us here today. This is about them. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you to the two other speakers for coming. Uh, that must have been very difficult to do that. Um, so we have questions lined up uh, from online. Some people have already submitted questions, but before we take online questions, I'll uh, open up to the floor. Uh, working journalists first, uh, followed by anybody else who wants to ask a question. Those are Richard, is it? Thank you. Uh, just tell us who you are when you come to the mic. Come on, thank you. My name is Richard Susilo. I'm from Indonesia, uh, Tribune News, Compass newspaper. Uh, the uh, movie, the film, documentary movie, I think is good for us. But what I would like to ask you, you told us that i aware that I broke the, the, role, the, uh, the rule. So you broke the uh, Japanese rule. Are you prepared for whatever the uh, if there is a punishment from the Japanese government to you. Thank you. Am I prepared for a punishment? Oh, I'm not sure how one would uh, how one would prepare for that. Um, but yes, I accept. It, but this isn't about me. I had a choice. I, I was a witness to what I believe to be violations of people's human rights. And I was compelled to collect evidence of that. Whatever happens to me, happens to me. But I am not the story. The story is about the people who are suffering in long-term immigration detention and who continue to suffer on provisional release. When they are on provisional release, their problems do not end. They do not have the right to work. 
they do not have health insurance. They do not have the freedom to move from one prefecture to another. Provisional release is simply a prison without walls. I would ask the media, don't make this story about me. It's about the people who are suffering. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman at the back of the room. Hi, I'm Thomas Hahn from Süddeutsche Zeitung. It's a German newspaper um, for Mr. Lewis and Mr. Dennis. Um, if it's OK for you and it's not too much intrusion in your privacy, could you give us a little bit more context on, on your story, where you come from, which countries you come from, um, why you had to fl flee, and uh, things like that? Only if this is not too much of an intrusion in your privacy. May I to say something first? Um, when you watch the film, you will see that we have been extremely careful to remove the family names of the people who are in the film and even to remove their nationality. We also have removed their reason for seeking refugee status. The reason why is because we, as the audience, we as people, do not, do not know how to judge someone's claim for asylum. I did not want to give the audience the tools for them to think whether or not someone is a quote unquote true refugee or not. That is not the issue here. The issue is how we treat applicants for asylum. If someone's case is decided that they are not going to be recognized as an asylum seeker, they still have human rights. So having said that, we're all free people to speak. So if you would like to answer the question and share where you're from and share briefly about your claim for asylum, that is your choice. But as the person who made the film, I felt that we are not in a position to be able to make those judgments. Do you want Thank you for a question from Germany. So, because you are from Germany, I believe that you know a lot about our situation. I am a Kurd who came from Turkey in Japan. Not a single Kurdish person has been recognized as a refugee. There's not a single person, a single Kurd. But in Germany, in the United States, New Zealand, in many other countries, there are many Kurdish people who have been accepted as refugees, who are receiving support, permanent resident status, I believe. Is that right? So I am applying for refugee status because of my situation as a Kurdish person. As Thomas said, the details of my situation, I won't. Uh, I, I have spoken in some newspaper articles and so on to the media about my detailed situation, but within the film, because it's a different situation, within that film, I, it's not including why I am here. So as Thomas said, I'll, I'll say the same thing in regards to the film. But that's the main thing I want people to know is that I am a Kurdish person. I am, you know, complete. I'm as Kurdish as you get. In my country, Kurdish people are being killed. The current government is. My relatives have been arrested, they have been killed. And that is happening now. So that is why I am here, because of what is happening as a Kurdish person. One other thing I would like to say is the immigration. One of the things that the Minister of Justice is saying 
Well, if you go against the immigration law, you will be arrested like a criminal. But we are not criminals. Arresting us in this way, it's wrong. If we wanted to follow the rules, Japan should follow the rules of the United Nations, and then we would be able to follow these rules. Japan needs to follow the Japanese, sorry, the United Nations rules. So for us to follow the rules of a country which is not following the rules of what the United Nations is saying, I think this is wrong. The UN has twice, and the US has also once given a warning to Japan in regards to this, but Japan didn't change. We want to work here. We're applying for refugees as refugees, but we're not allowed to work. We don't have insurance. Is that the same in any other country? When you're applying as a refugee, you can't travel to a different state, you can't work, you can't get insurance. Is there another country like that? Thank you. So that's, I, I would really like to point out this is, this rule is wrong. Thank you very much, everyone. And thank you also for your question and regards to everyone in Germany. Do you want to say something? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I come from Africa, uh, especially uh, Cameroon. Uh, but I, I grew up, I live Cameroon in my young age. I don't even know the Cameroon. I grew up in Central Africa Republic. And uh, I come to Japan in 2002 after the, my family was involved in the coup d'etat in Central Africa. So uh, I lost most of most members of my family in 2000, 2001. When I leave Central Africa, I went to different country where uh, also was difficult. The country was in war too. So I, have, I managed to escape to go back for one week to Central Africa and have a Japanese visa. And I walk like 45, 45 days walking to, to reach the airport. Then I come to Japan in 2001, I play for a refugee. But since then, they did not give me any refugee. I submit all kind of evidence. They do not accept to give me a refugee. So that is my, my situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we have a question. We have several questions online. I will read uh, one of them now. This is from uh, Itaru Matsui-san um, of the company DocuMeme. Uh, the question is, what kind of legal reforms do you think are necessary for the new CAN in the future? What kind of uh, reforms do you think are necessary for the immigration uh, system in the future? I'll read from you our impact vision statement. It is that it is to have an immigration system where all refugees are recognized in a just, timely, and transparent process. You know, I, I appreciate the question, what, what are we supposed to do? What should happen? You know, we don't necessarily know how to fix the problem. And the first step is to become aware of the problem. And there are many people in the Japanese public that are not, uh, not aware of this problem. And so the first step is to bring awareness, to show people what is happening, and to inspire them to think about this question, which is, what do we, as citizens, want for our country? How are we complicit in the policies of our government? In many ways, this is not our fight. This is not our fight to fight. We are just the vessels. We will not bear the burden of those who come against us, those who threaten us, those who fall victim to the fear. And we are going to remain resolute in our mission, which is to share the truth. Thank you. Do the other two speakers have any comments on that question? So how should the uh, immigration system be reformed? Uh, so how to change uh, this law and how it should change? Um, firstly, the current law is like terrible. Firstly, uh, we our desire is to be able to work. 
Uh, in other countries, there's no rule that says we can't work, but in Japan, there's the rule that says that we're not allowed to work. And uh, my dream, uh, my foremost, is to be able to work and make money for myself and buy a birthday present for my wife. Currently, I am not working, and my wife takes care of me. And because of that, so although I feel bad about it, basically money, everything, my wife is helping me out. And I think, like as a human, the most embarrassing thing is to be able to is to not work and have other people spend money for you. But uh, because of the immigration uh, authorities, that's my situation. Number one, I'd like to work. So, as far as law, I'd like the law to change so that we can work. The second thing I, that I would like to change or have to see change is. As far as the current applicants who have applied as a refugee, they're not allowed to move between prefectures or out, they're not allowed to move outside of Tokyo. Uh, but I think that's insulting to us. Excuse me, but because uh, I applied as a refugee, a refugee. And so this law is uh, wrong. In 2010, we were allowed to move uh, between prefectures. Now we're not allowed to. Also, long detention is something I would like to see end. Uh, take the example of Europe. Uh, let's see how. Uh, take a look at how they're handling uh, refugee applications. Uh, but in Japan, like one year, two years, up to five years. Uh, detention. Uh, this is wrong. Another thing, uh, there's many Kurds uh, and their wives are often uh, Kurds uh, and they have their chi chi children born in Japan uh, but their children aren't allowed to have visas. They're also in the status of provisional uh, release and I think that's wrong. So as far as these rules, laws uh, of immigration, I think uh, there's a lot to be concerned about and there's a lot wrong in them. Thank you. I think that changing the rules and the law is, is, is a good thing, but they have, they have to change the mentality too. Because what they are, like I said before, what they are doing is that immigration is, 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 is not what the law is saying. Because... Uh, don't bring people to the hospital, breaking people marriage, ask women to do abortion. This is no way it's writing in the, in the law. So I think that is a, like one of the immigration officers told me that is, is the policy given by the central government to, 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 to do that, but it's not writing in the law. So even if we go, we change the law and they don't change the, 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 the way they see foreigner, it's not going to work. They will, they're going to keep doing the same thing. You know, so they can write a beautiful law, but not change the way they see foreigner, because for me, I think that it's only uh, it's racial, hygienic, it's kind of clear some race from their 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 uh, their race. So uh, changing the law is not only the solution; it's also change the way they see foreigner. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Thomas. Can I ask you a question? Have you had any uh, attention from the authorities since you? Uh, began talking about this issue? Um, I have not. Um, I fully expected that I would get at least a phone call from someone from immigration. Um, I did not think that the biggest f force against it would be from a supporter. Um, and I find that really unfortunate because, as, as Dennis said, we need to be putting our energy and our efforts together. Please don't waste your energy and your time trying to make people be quiet. Let's, you know, you don't have to like what I did. You can actually not like what I did. That's okay. But please use your time. And your, these people are so amazing, these supporters. They have done so many 
amazing things to get out information, to help people, to do translations for refugee applications, to get lawyers. This group is brilliant. They are absolutely amazing. And they, I, I, would, I, I pray for them that they will use their time and their energy and their talent to help the people that are being affected. Please, I implore you, if, 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 if it is caused that there becomes a, 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 a fractioning of our groups, then immigration is going to win. Don't let them win. We are not the enemy. Telling the truth is not the enemy. Let us bring our gifts of time and energy together to help the people that are being so desperately um, affected. Thank you. Uh, just a second, P.O., is that okay? Because this question, online question, is directly relevant. So I'll just read out the question, which is, comes from Ichiro Sato, where, who says he is one of uh, Mr. Pina's supporters, yeah? Okay, can... Uh, is that all right? Wait, one moment. Can I just see it real quick? Uh, we cannot read his full name. Oh, his full name, I see. The, the, the person it refers to, right? Yes. Okay, I see. Okay. Uh, so I, I, will, I will read out the email, but not mention the name of the person it refers to. Uh, Mr. Rash uh, has made a documentary about the name of the person, but the person has not given you permission to do so. The Japanese Immigration Bureau will take revenge on him. Uh, this person might even die because of it. Why did you trample on his human rights and on his life, is the question. It's obviously a hostile question, but it's good to deal with it, Jeff. Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. No, I just, um, just to clarify, um, I, I asked David to please not read the full name of this person, because this supporter, who is concerned, rightfully so, about his safety, has written publicly a question that was about to be read over a live broadcast the full name of this person. That to me is a, is, a, is a problem. As I told you, we have taken care to try to, as much as possible, protect some of the personal information of the people that we documented. Um, I have already addressed this issue in my comments. I can tell you that all nine people that appear in the film have given their permission on multiple times. Um, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm saddened that it appears that, um, that, that the supporters of this person um, and, and even this person himself appear to feel, feel differently about his appearance in the film. Um, I can tell you that up until the day before I, I uh, released the trailer, I communicated with all of the people. They all knew that it was going to happen. At no point in, in any recent period um, were there any issues um, regarding the release of it. Uh, and in fact, two days after the trailer was released, I also had a conversation with the individual concerned, and they were um, completely fine. Um, of course, people are scared. Of course, it is a risk. But this person told me in no uncertain terms that they supported the documentary and they wanted to raise their voice. Um, if that is no longer the case, then I then I am I am deeply saddened by that. But I I can tell you that 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 is that simply was not the case. Um, what What do you think the questioner means by um, asking if this? He says this person might die because of this movie. I mean, I don't get what that means. Why uh, would the person die? Well, we would need to. I, I wish that we were here in person and we could. I know. Simasan, go menasai. I know. Sorry, I would like to say I know this person directly and it's completely different what he has been saying. This is completely wrong. I, I was on the same block as this person who is being referred to and since we've been released, we're connected, we talk all the time and we talk also, we've also talked a lot about this film together and he said he wanted to be in this as well, he agreed upon this. So, this, hearing this question, I really want to say, well, I'm sorry, but... I, I, our job as supporters is to support the people that we are trying to help. This, this person involved 
is in a very fragile state and is very susceptible to many, many different forces. And so our job is to protect and to support the people in the film. And, and people have a right to, for their feelings to develop and change. And so we need to support all the people in the film, including this person. He is our brother and we, we love him and we support him fully. All right, sorry to, I'm just gonna move things along because we only have four minutes left and uh, P.O., I believe, has a question. Is that right, P.O.? Yes. Those all. Hi, uh, Pio de Miglia from Italy. Um, <clears throat> I didn't see the movie yet, but I'm going to do it very soon, hopefully. Congratulations anyway, even without seeing it. <laughs> uh, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, I'm sure you are aware that right in these days, the Japanese government, the Japanese, yeah, Liberal Party, um, announced the officially that they are going to give up uh, to this uh, uh, um, new legislation on immigration. Uh, do you think that this uh, will uh, have uh, some impact in, uh, in the rules and the way of management of immigration? Clearly, in my opinion, I've been following this for many years, it means that the Japanese government is not so much uh, uh, you know, uh, strong in, in believing in this uh, thing anymore. So they may give in in something. So are you positive? Are you optimistic in this? And then uh, secondly is, uh, can you ex exactly tell me, uh, I'm asking about those that have been inside, uh, how exactly does it function, the visiting uh, system? Because sometimes I have been trying to visit uh, people as a friend and they told me that it's not possible to visit as friends. But some other people told me that, yes, as friends, it's possible. How does it work exactly? Of course, not being a, a journalist, not saying that you're a journalist, of course. So just two questions. One, has the, so the LDP's decision or the government's decision to abandon reforms, will that have an impact on uh, immigration rules? And how does the visiting system work uh, uh, if you're not a family member? I think it's uh, you know, it's it's hard to to say what's going to happen moving forward with legislation. I think we're at a very peak time um, with the unfortunate death of Wishma still very much in the news, um, and with with the, all these other deaths um, that have happened over the past twenty years. We have the Olympics coming up. The world's eyes are on Japan. Um, some of our supporters were so thrilled when these reforms were withdrawn. Um, but I think we need to be very careful uh, about how much we celebrate because those reforms were going to make a really bad situation even worse. So yes, the government briefly gave up on making the situation worse, but things are still very, very bad. And the rule on visiting? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, in fact, it's difficult for the journey. More, there's more process for uh, journalists to visit, but family members or friends can, can visit freely. What it requires is, is for you to know the person's full name and their nationality, but anyone, anyone, anyone can go and, and can visit. So I'm not, sure what, I'm not sure what happened. I'll vouch for that. I've been to prisons and I've visited yeah. people, yeah. Using my own name, yep. Yeah. As long as they want, well, as long as they want to see you, Right. As yeah. long as you've, and then the other issue might be that the authorities might not want you to see them for whatever reason. But I, I've never yeah, experienced that, it. That's possible. They can refuse. It, yes, I mean, if it's not up to them. They can refuse a visit too if they don't. Yeah, yeah. They can and they should. But I'm saying, can the authorities just refuse it because they don't want it? That's that's about. Of course, they can refuse. But mm. I, I was told. Can you I, I didn't. Microphone for the interpreter. Oh. Uh, Right, so just to clarify, Pio is asking, can the authorities unilaterally decide that a visitor cannot meet an inmate? A detainee. Well, they can, I mean, do you want to answer the question? Mm. あの、入管に来てて、その入管の決まりで、ジャデニさんは面会はダメと言える。
。はい、すみません。ありがとうございます。Um, so、thank you. 私たちの名前と日本人を知っている人たちは、私たちの名前を知っている人たちは、私たちの名前を知っている人たちは、私たちの名前を知っている人たちは、私たちの名前を知っている They don't want them to see Denise. And so, when、uh, calling the cell phone of the volunteer、uh, to, call, to come visit me, and, but、um, and when that happened,、uh, the, what was said was that、uh, Denise、uh, wasn't available. Uh, uh, and the person in charge on the day decides that.、Um, and so the person comes to see me,、uh, and they're told that they're not able to see me, but it's、uh, a lie. I actually want to see them, I want to talk to them, I want them to help me.、Uh, something less terrible like that has happened before. Uh, so that's clear.、Um, it really happened. Thank you very much. But the authorities can stop you seeing somebody if they want to.、Uh, well, look, we're out of time. My apologies. We're actually over time. So、uh, Thank thanks so much to Thomas uh, for uh, coming along and introducing his movie.、Uh, Thomas, you just want to remind people so it's May 27th, 9 p.m. Japanese time when you can see the movie. That's correct. It,、uh, there needs to be registration for it, and we're going to be having that information available soon. It'll be available on our Twitter account, at Ushiku Film, and on our website, ushikufilm.com. Okay, and、uh, thanks so much as well to Mr. Denny's and Mr. Louis Christian for coming along.、Uh, we know it took a lot of guts to do that, especially given that your, your、uh, legal claims are still pending, right? This is a very a brave thing to do, so thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for turning up. Uh, the video will be available on、uh, YouTube, I believe, within the next 24 hours, and it will have English uh, uh, or、uh, English vocals, right? On it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye bye.